Hey there everybody and welcome, welcome to Dragon's Roar, Journey to the Edge of Sight. Yes! I got it right. And that's starting to become a rhyme of the show, I guess. Have a cookie. <laughs> uh, thank you, I do have some cookies with me. <laughs> ah, there you go. I'm, I'm gonna have a cookie, thank you. Thank you very much for permission, Simon. How's everybody doing? Ah, uh, long time no see. <sighs> Tired. As... I'm a little tired. Yeah. Yes. I'm not. <laughs> well, it's like evening for there you there for you, right? It's eight. It's eight p.m. Yeah. So that doesn't count. Doesn't count. It's nice to have a bit of a later morning. Oh well. Mm. <laughs> you so you you are um, hungover right now? I say. Very. Very. Very hungover. Very hungover. Okay, that looks like a vodka bottle. I, I know it's water, but it looks like a vodka bottle. No, 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 no. You don't understand. He's that's how I, why he, you know, he just he doesn't get sober. He just like keeps drinking. So oh, I guess oh, okay. It's a, it's a, it's a, everybody yeah. do that. Yeah, oh. of course, of course. Jack just being so. So my voice is taking a beating from last night, apparently, and it's <laughs> going to be like this for the rest of the show, probably. Very manly, very manly, very masculine. Yeah, I love, I love the voice. It's really good. J manly I want, like, Jason Chan. I want an audiobook with that. Um, okay, so I just want to explain that I think today was my most Hollywood day ever. And by Hollywood, I mean I literally could have seen this day. There is a movie that pictures this day that I've just had. Um, I was just amazing we art gallery picnic with uh cooks for f from three different parts of the full fucking world with your hungarian mexican and a british guy and somebody from sri lanka they all cooked and i got to eat a lot of free food from all the corners of the world and there's just today was amazing art gallery we met an artist that does this little pieces these little sculpture pieces uh which are amazing at first when you see them very minimalistic very nice with the jokes um but you really don't understand how good they are until you actually ask him how he made them he made a small babylon a small like, replica of babylon um and he made it with stones from 15 different countries and sand from 30 something different countries the amount of how anal he is about it is just amazing and that makes the piece even more even better and we got to meet him randomly because we were there at the right time um so yeah this day has been very good what have you say nice. tell us, tell us um, about twitchcon yeah, yeah i'm still super jet lagged so i'm not tired at all even though it's 9 pm i should be tired but i slept until half past two or something today um twitchcon was fantastic um San Francisco was fantastic. I've never been so far, but um, was my first time. That was really good. Um, I met so many D and D people there. I met like Adam Coble. I met Neil. I met the whole Miss Clicks people. Um, it was really good. It was fun. They were all super nice. Uh, we hung out. We talked about D and D and other things. And uh, fun itself was really fun. Um, the panels were really good, very interesting, and I, I really enjoyed it. Like I don't. I don't regret at all going there. Basically, when you came through the entrance door, um, there was already like a jazz band playing Mario songs and stuff. It was it was so much fun. It was really good. Yeah, I can imagine. That's that's all the extent that I can do. I can just imagine. Yeah, it's it was it was fantastic. It was really good. I mean, I I went there for San Francisco and TwitchCon, but like, I did not regret going there. It was it was really good. Awesome, what about you, Simon? How have you been doing? Uh, been doing pretty well. Started a, a new job, so it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. Awesome, how are you finding it? Very, very pleasant, actually. Uh, very, very nice co workers. Uh, the, the children, I could say, the youngsters are very. Uh, very nice, very, you know, very accepting of new people, so it's always nice. Uh, it's yeah. awesome to hear. What do you work as again? Uh, an assistant. 
Mm -hmm. Like in a school. So, special uh, kit for kids with special needs. Awesome. Yeah, good for you. I mean, it's great. It's great that you found a good job. That's where you find usually. Indeed. So I'm. I'm very glad. So I can you... get back to a regular mm -hmm. schedule. No. No more working. Uh, working late, then working early, mm. and working we and no more working weekends. So. At least. So you can spend your weekends just playing D and D all day, <laughs> all night, right? <laughs> yep. That's the plan. That's the plan. So what about you, Justin? How have you been doing? I think I'm probably better. I don't feel sick. Oh, you're sick not, yeah, you're not me. sick anymore. Yeah, that was so shitty. Uh, I, last night I actually had a, uh, a really nice dinner party. I made uh, French onion soup, sous vide salmon with a lemon butter dill sauce. Broiled asparagus and chocolate mousse. Mmm. All turned out really well. So. Sounds nice. A little bit of prep for my uh, Master Chef audition. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What? Oh, you're auditioning. All right. Yep. I. Yeah. Just is gonna be a Master Chef. I mean, if they accept me, yeah, I have an audition in seven days. It's gonna be a celebrity. Cool. It's gonna be a celebrity. It's gonna be too cool to hang out with us anymore. After that. <laughs> What do you mean anymore? Isn't that like normal, Justin? <laughs> I can totally see Justin with a chef's hat. To be fair, I can totally yes. see you. Like yes, there. same here. Yeah. Um, today, I've had I think that the, the um, chilliest sauce ever, the the hottest sauce ever. Uh, never <laughs> like when a, so <laughs> when a Mexican comes mm. to you and says. Do not put more than a couple of drops. This is very hot. When, yeah. when when a Mexican comes and says that, you listen to her. Yeah. You listen to her. You just you you, you don't even put half of what she said. Yeah. Don't don't try to man mode this. I you man mode it. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I man mode it. Oh, basically, same, it was a red same dragon. Same goes for Indian Indian food, by the way. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. I, I was basically I look like the red dragon in in our in our. <laughs> Picture. That's how I looked for a couple of seconds. Uh, <laughs> like at first, I was like, "Oh, I can eat this. It's okay." And then I put a drop too much, just a uh, drop too much, and I could feel. Uh, my eyes were chewing. I could feel just my nose and in, in the back of my nose. That's why it was so chewy. I was like, uh, <gasps> "Oh, I did to pull down milk down my nose." That, that's how uh, hot it was. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about what happened in uh, Dragon's War. So this we've had um, we had a couple of things happening, actually a lot of things happening. Uh, Justin, you want to do a recap? Sure. What happened? We managed to escape from the two befores. Mm -hmm. That was good. Yay. Uh, but we kind of left the door open behind us, and stuff started coming out, and it was super bad. And we discovered that the elf. Oh no! First, everyone went to um, talk to the dryads, and Fama drinks some magic water and is no longer a wear rat. And now there's something else that's um, <laughs> different about her. Um, it's definitely not the same Saskia you saw before, like the first time you met her, Bjorn, uh, as Bjorn. And definitely not the same Saskia um, that you saw after you left the Tomb of Hours. Ah, she, so she became a little prettier, so what? <laughs> it don't matter to Esbjorn. Yeah, Esbjorn is just interested in my in my inner values, it's okay. <laughs> also, so, like, hashtag super root dryad confirmed. <laughs> yep, yep. And then uh, Princess Tiger Lily had a brilliant yeah, do, you, do you actually remember why you went to the drive? Yeah, I do. Because we wanted to ask them for water from the Fountain of Life, I think was called, or Well of Life. Yes, um, yes. Because we needed to use that to douse the magma dragon that would eventually probably attack us from the Tomb of Horrors. Yeah. The question is we, how to apply it. Hear him? Yeah. It's okay. Sasuke can just like tie a You use those little spray arrow. bottles that you use against cats when they are naughty, like psst, 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 psst. Yep. That's 
<laughs> no? Okay. okay. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, after I that, we, I can totally see it. After that, we had a very, very interesting encounter between Princess Tigerly and <laughs> and the Stephanos. elf who was dead. Yeah, Stephanos. Well, not uh, dead. Uh, the elf that you first met when you entered this forest. Haunting the forest. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. Princess Tyler ended up agreeing to a blood oath in exchange for him helping close the portal to the Tomb of Horrors and giving up everything he had stolen. Also, uh, besides, um, the, like, I mean, what did the blood oath entail, actually? That's more important. Ty, Princess Tyler had to give him um, one of the silvered weapons. And the party doesn't know this, but the reason he wants it is because there's an egg inside of it that will allow him to be reborn. It's basically a receptacle for life energy. Mm hmm Okay. And yeah, that's it's exactly it. Uh, Saskia currently has that extra dagger that was uh, belonged to two men uh, before yeah. he um, unfortunately departed you guys. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I think the last time we finished our session was exactly after uh, Stefanos disappeared uh, and he left you all the items he ever got uh, in his travels and his and him haunting the forest. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you guys have the uh, waters of the Fountain of Life. Um, and what is to do next is your own uh, idea. So, what do you want to do next? I think we have to play the end, the encounter, the discussion, the debate. Oh, I'm kind of. Oh God, I don't want to play this. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Justin, I still, I still really like you. Okay, we're not going, we're not going to uh, break up our friendship over this, right? Okay. Just, it's just a game. <laughs> okay, good. Famous okay. last words of a friendship. Okay. <laughs> so, for game, in, make harsh enemies through D&D, then find them and fight them. That's... Are we just because Tiger Lily and Sasuke are going to have some interpersonal issues? Doesn't mean me and Fiamma have those answers. Of course. Of course. Why you have to be mad? And, and, <laughs> is it my accent or is it just his accent? That's why you have to be mad. It's classic YouTube clip. Something ice hockey player putting on an accent saying it's only game. Why you have to be mad? Mm, nice. I'm not not very good at classic YouTube, as you might. I am, and I've never heard that one. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, not it comes up a lot when you're playing games like Counter Strike. Ah, uh, I never played Counter Strike. Might be the problem. Well, okay, not never, but not recently. Okay, so, uh... Um, so I, I think we're, like, generally... I'm not sure if Isai's character doesn't mind too much, but I think Sasuke and I might be generally displeased with Tiger Lily's, like, actions. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's no literally way. go into this. Uh, yeah. like, right now. Like, that's where we start. You guys have talked to Princess Tiger for just a bit. You know that she's made a brother with because, uh, Stefanos told you the, uh, elven ghost. Um, and then... He just disappeared, uh, letting you in the middle of the discussion to resolve it upon yourselves. Okay, maybe, maybe Princess Tiger Lily can confirm again what the conditions of the Blood Oath are, as in when. Philip, what happens again? Uh, I literally can't leave the forest. And we have to sacrifice that. Dagger, right? The hats and just only the dagger, like uh, or like the silver weapon. Yeah, but I mean, even even if we manage to defeat the magma dragon and the the elven priestess, there's still stuff living in the tomb of horrors that will constantly come out. And if we fight them and they have a chance to back into it, they can keep coming out again and again and again because the portal's open. We need to close the portal at some point. And they said it would require the sacrifice. The centaur said it would require a sacrifice of someone with a lot of experience. 
and I don't want to kill someone who's alive. This elf is already dead. What does the elf get? Out? Does he gets to get back to life? As mm-hmm. well? He says that the weapons are somehow receptacles for life, and he can grow a new body inside of it and come back to life. Ah. Uh. I'm not sure how that's going to work if his soul has been sacrificed to close the portal. Because the dagger will keep a splinter of your soul. Hmm. And from that splinter you can resurrect, apparently. Oh, that's not... Sorry, that's out of character. That was like... I apologize. No, you could know that in character. I could? Yeah, I mean, you just had this talk. You just a gigantic cog. This this witchery could be a supposition of Saskia. It makes sense because you, as characters, don't know. You everyone has a has a spark of goodness in them, though, and and I don't think that Tin Man would let anything but the that spark of goodness inside <sighs> leaping the rest of his poison toxic soul outside. Okay, so so Saskia, she has the, she has her arm in her in her cloak, right, mm-hmm. in, in in the pocket of her cloak, and she can feel the the dagger. Yeah, it's um, transmitting feelings, emotions uh, towards you as it has been. Um, you quite realize this; it's like its way of communicating in a way, mm-hmm. um, and it's transmitting feelings of like desperation and fear. Mm-hmm. So when I when I when I touch it, and I just quietly whisper. Um, why why are you so scared? Does anything happen? You feel um, you see this image in your head mm-hmm. of a, a completely uh, a pure white flower um, in, a, in a field in a field of dead flowers and then this black ooze creature just dropping on you like some type of black black paint that's how it looks like and then mm-hmm. the car then the flower itself transforms into a black rose a black foamed rose mm. okay so I look at princess tiger lily and I say I I have no... Oh, Sasuke, I owe me an intelligence check. Oh, well, okay. Oh, one second! I don't have my character sheet open! Somebody do something Just throw me a 1d20. Just throw me a 1d20. Okay. Whoop! Whoop! 13. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'll give you this then. Uh, the rose is extremely familiar. The rose is extremely familiar. Extremely familiar. Uh, I'm not gonna say anything more than that. I'm just saying like it's been a long time since we've prayed and we've had a couple of weeks, so it's like understandable you forget. <laughs> but somebody got a rose, so I'm pretty sure that Princess Tiger Lily got a rose at some point yeah. from somebody it was, as a present. Uh, was it from the tree end? No. No, that was from. We got a leaf. The... I think. It might have been the witch, like in the with the little with the sap. Yeah, the like. All oh, right, and did Pharaoh give the rose? And Pharaoh had that. Did he take the rose? Yeah, the the witch turned into a black rose, right, when she died. After yeah, and he, okay, there you go, there you go. And as you yeah, think about that, you remember rose, okay. you remember many creatures that you've killed. For example, the abominations <laughs> that you've killed turned into a black rose. The Fomorian which is a creature mm-hmm. created uh, with the use of the red orb turned into a black rose as he died. Mm-hmm. Black robes. Okay. So this black rose is extremely familiar and it relates to almost the whole time, almost everything that you've been through as a party. So are these black roses like the essence of the corruption of a soul and it actually shows when they die? That's super weird. 
That's in a hypothesis. <sighs> what happens when I touch my weapon? Uh, you touch your weapon and you fear of um, courage. Uh, like you're, you just you get warmer inside, and as you as you touch it, it's like you you concentrate because that's what you're trying to feel something. Mm -hmm. So you're opening yourself up, uh, mm -hmm. and as you do this, um, you hear kind of a a whisper, uh, a whisper in the back of your head uh, saying, <clears throat> "Lionheart," and you cannot. Help yourself, but take the web to take the hand off as this startles you. Okay. Is it like a what? What does it sound like? Like a, like a creature or like a human or what? What it's kind of voice? It's vaguely is it? familiar to your mother. Okay. You're not I, exactly I guess sure. I, it's I'm like just startled, and I look around you, to yeah, check if anybody else heard that. <laughs> I'm just looking, you're like. You think about it a bit, and it's like, it is very familiar, but at the same time, you know it's not your mother. Maybe it sounds a bit like your father. No, it's not the exact same thing, but it's at that grade of familiarity. Like, you okay. feel like you've known that voice for your whole life. Okay, so I guess Saskia hesitates, but she knows that, I mean, we're standing before a quite important decision. So, so she... Um, yeah, she just holds her, her bow in her hands again, she looks at it, and she f she just closes her eyes and focuses completely on her weapon. Okay. Uh, you close your eyes and you focus completely on your weapon. Everybody else, please give me a perception check. As you are, the centaurs are a bit away, you're just standing here in this, some quite informal circle, everybody either on the grass or back against one of the trees. That should actually be a 20 for me, mm -hmm. plus 3, not plus SBR 2. and Princess Tigery. Uh, Jason, can you give me a perception check as well? Okay. So SBR and Princess Tigery, you see something around Saskia. It's like an aura. Um, and the tips of her hair slightly tingle and rise. And as you look at her, you feel inspired. It's it's like as if you're looking at a goddess of war. <laughs> oh, okay. Like it's it's that type of feeling. Um, this takes you quite by surprise, and you, Saskia, mm -hmm. uh, you reach you reach deeper and deeper into the sword and you, you you let it enter your mind and as you do that you hear this whisper turning into an actual voice I am a lion heart I I'm Saskia <laughs> how do you do <laughs> how's it going no it's I I can hear you you feel like uh, a sense of pride, uh, happiness being um, transmitted through the bow. Okay, I just slowly say, so what What are you exactly? Um, uh, this is transmitted very weirdly. Um, you see like a s images, images that mm -hmm. convey the message uh, and translated kind of it's it's a message only you would understand with references deep from your childhood and from your younger years uh, like you know those type of weird references that only somebody through their own personal experience understands mm -hmm. that's exactly what happens and it says I am you and what the image of a flower blossoming and from mm -hmm. that flower inside a bee comes uh, pollinizes it and this uh, pollinizes the stem and then later on another small flower uh, grows next to it uh, mm -hmm. and goes it's using the shadow of the first flower as its sunlight oh okay <clears throat> Mm 
Mm-hmm. So I just, I mean, it feels like this is, if it says it's me, it feels like this is actually part of me, right? Because I can feel all this familiarity. Yes. Okay, I I just... I mean, I guess I can just think to myself. I don't need to talk, but because it, it doesn't... I guess it, it feels like I don't need to talk, in a way. Um, so Sasha just keeps her eyes closed, closed and says... Well, things, basically... About what would happen when she dies to the Lionheart. Mm, you fear a certain type of uh, uncertainty. Uh, it's as if you're talking to you're, you're trying to like ask him something that uh, you know maybe I mean he should know but then mm-hmm. you realize it's still part to you it's mm-hmm. been you since the beginning so everything it knows is from what you know so mm. he doesn't know what would happen But you do feel quite optimistic, like, in the face of, of death, uh, the bow transmits this feeling of, how do I put it, um, passion. So, that happened. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it only lasts for a bit. Uh, for you guys, like and then the... she's changed. She's definitely changed. Ringo, ringoing that aura still stays somewhat a roof around her, but it's not visible anymore. Her hair is normal again, but her image definitely changed. And Princess Tiger, you saw this, and uh, you don't know what you get from it. The same for you as Bjorn. Jason didn't necessarily notice it. Jason, you might have noticed that, that everybody was acting a bit strange, but it was so strange. fast that... Yeah, you, you're so fast that you don't really understand why. So people are just kind of like acting weird all the time. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> uh, as Bjorn and Princess Tiger just looked to actually stare wordlessly at Saskia, and there was something strange about Saskia, but you couldn't really put your finger on it. With my low perception score, I don't think Jay... Uh, I don't think... I noticed anything really. No, you didn't notice that this is overtly obvious. Put it like this. You just don't notice uh, anything important. Like this is overtly obvious. Well, only if he's paying attention, he could just be so as obvious as someone just appearing out of nowhere in the middle of a dungeon and shouting out his name was Jason Chance. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I understand the feeling. How are you feeling? I I... Thanks for asking. <laughs> I'm not I'm not quite sure I think my weapon can talk to me in a way which means it has some kind of conscience apparently I I take out my own weapon I look at it you look at it do I get any weird sensations from it? By looking at it, you don't. What did you do? It's, um... You try to communicate with it. Just... Like? Not with words, not with words. Just let, let In the mind. go, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um... As Bjorn kind of closes his eyes, tries to concentrate and see if we can get any like, reaction. Okay, so you concentrate and you open yourself <laughs> up uh, and you feel something pulling in um, strength, power, as, as sturdy as a granite wall. Um, you feel this imposing presence. Um, this feeling that you are indestructible, that you are made of the purest steel, made on Heaven's Forge. And <clears throat> you concentrate 
harder and you also hear a familiar whisper and mm, uh, what real fast what was the gem you had on your weapon uh, I believe it was a sapphire but let me check yeah it's quite uh, important yes okay um, it's a sapphire and you hear this whisper saying I I am chameleon and you feel this um, type of the steel, this this power, the sturdiness, being also versatile, as flexible as plastic, changing within given situation, uh, adaptable to anything, resistance to everything. I gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, same uh, thing guys, happens. Like, like, um, yeah, so yeah, as like, you guys, like, who, who are you? Uh, like, like this is you. He, you, uh, Saskia and Princess Tigori. You were walking out for this. Jason, can you give me a perception check? Again? Yes, please. No, you don't. Uh, so you look at him, and you feel this. Um, you feel as if you're looking at a 150 foot tall wall in front of you. It's that feeling that an invader gets when he faces a fortress so big that not even the highest tallest uh, mountain he's seen comes close to that. So something like overwhelming odds. Yes, extremely like, like overwhelming. That's the uh, perfect word to describe what you feel when you look at um, Espeorn. This just incredible power. Again, fades in a couple of seconds, and you think about who are you, and exact exactly the same image is given to you uh, that was given to Saskia when you asked that when she asked that. I am you. It's in, yeah, it's me. I think. Yeah. Or perhaps what I'm supposed to be, or aspiring to be. Maybe so. I guess. Maybe. So I guess Princess Tiger Lily at this point will take out her bow and focus on her bow. What uh, gem did you have in? Uh, emerald. emerald. Okay. By our powers combined, we are Captain. <laughs> okay. So uh, you you resonate with your bow. Um, and as you guys, um, as you guys are gonna look at her, Jason, give me another perception check. No, you don't see it. <laughs> uh, you, Jason, like, uh, I, I imagine Jason is standing, uh, looking at a flower or something. He's like picking his nose and like flicking his boogers <laughs> and like hands. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're talking what, a lot. What's I feel like we already know what we have to do. I don't know why they're standing there. So. You stand there and you think, you think hard, you open yourself up and emotions, deep rooted emotions that have always been there in the back of your head but you've never really listened to them. And these emotions rush in and uh, they talk about freedom, about a blue sky above that's unlimited and you feel this type of aloof sensation as you are as if you're floating through the air unhinged by everything um, and you hear a whisper turning into a voice saying I am traveler and you guys Saskia as Bjorn you see this creature in front of you as as a giant eagle soaring in the sky. Um, that's, that's the image upon looking up into Staggeruri. It's as if she's floating where she is right now. Uh, not changed by, not chained by everything. Uh, powerful enough to conquer everything. Again, just a couple of seconds and then the feeling subsides. Princess Staggeruri, you say or do anything else? Uh, also, can you, uh, you know, you continue on, don't worry. Okay. 
no, I, I um, Princess Agatha is like kind of overwhelmed at the moment. She doesn't really have anything to say. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, Jason, this could quite be weird. I mean, there's new people you've met, and uh, you haven't met them in the most normal circumstances, but still, this is a bit uh, weird. Um, you fear all of you, as you've bonded with your weapons, you feel this uh, malevolent aura still, like, staring at you. Princess Tiger, you do know this is Stefanos. He's not necessarily looking at you from a corner of a tree or somewhere, he's just there. It's as if you're in his house, in a way of saying. Uh, he's just around. The very air smells of him. We're in his neighborhood now. <laughs> I better watch out. Uh, so... I say like, so, let me get this straight. We have to take this dagger, uh, which contains the Tin Man's part of his spirit, and sacrifice it to close the portal. Am I following you so far? I think you just, you, I think you made Justin. Go on. <clears throat> yes, but, uh, but Justin said anything. Justin, did you say anything? Yes. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> um, yes. Dot. <laughs> I, I, I really can't condone taking you taking an oath such a malicious creature, but I think at this point we have very little choice. The way is we have to do uh, we, have, we have to complete this for the sake of the, the greater good. But I hope this won't end up biting us in the ass, but yeah, that's the feeling I get. Damn it. <laughs> I guess I guess I just like that I a, a silent curse word in Dwarvish. Uh, so do we have much time do we have? Can anyone remember? It's been a while. <laughs> I take out my watch and I'm like... <laughs> you take out your watch, sorry? <laughs> the watch is like a my little watch. sun. I don't know. <laughs> ah, the shadow. <laughs> oh, time. Um, so you guys, I think, still have, you finished the gems you had a day. Uh, for that, it was four hours, eight hours. You still have, you still have half a day. You have like fourteen hours left, some somewhere of the sort, until you are you are told to uh, come and help um, the fight. Basically, you haven't. You also have been told that however fast you can, like the faster the better. Yeah. <sighs> Shit's pouring out from that thing as we speak, I'm guessing. And yeah. stuff's coming to them. Mm. Yeah. Remember that uh, the there's a combination of a very powerful force you have here. Uh, the Tomb of Horrors is filled uh, with creatures, um, mostly evil and very hungry. Um, a realm of fire, and fire is destruction. Um, and all of these creatures are pulling out, following the magma dragon. But also, is the Lady of the Night, um, the cleric, one of the uh, spellcasters who is responsible for creating a portal to this place. And she is known as the patron of all lycanthropes. So besides her personal army that she has been brewing inside of that place, also 
all the Raccoon folks can feel her presence and they are coming rushing to her. In a couple of days, all of the Lycanthropes in the forest and near the forest would come to their help and they would break the central line as the centaurs are currently thinned out fighting two fronts, uh, trying to cut off their reinforcements but also trying to contain the army of the Magma Dragon and the Radio of the Night only to the middle of the forest where the Tomb of Horror's entrance resides. So the, situ the situation is precarious and why dangerous? On so, the edge is a good description. Um, do we only close the the main portal, or do we also close the port? Like we came out through um through that magma fountain thing, right? We came out through a back door. Yeah, like does it would the back door close as well, or just the main entrance thing? Like could they still get out from the other side? That's a good question. They're all linked to the same spell in the book, aren't they? Yeah, they are. If um, if the way that the entrance was made, you can only think that this is the way that the exit was made, the shortcut by Xerxes. And most likely, you can understand that he needed a power to make such an exit, such a shortcut, with what power the Gratini Demon gave him. And as he needed to feed him, a shortcut was a very easy way of bringing in fresh souls until he could escape easily without even the knowledge of the Magma Dragon and uh, the Lady of the Night. Okay, so it's all linked together. Yeah. And apparently the Lady of the Night ha has not yet left that tomb. Apparently, no, we only, apparently only the Magma Dragon has taken up ah. uh, residence above the entrance, guarding <clears throat> it. Um, you don't have any more updates than that, that's, that's when you asked information. We've sighted the Magma Dragon, he's out, mm -hmm. he's not burning the forest, which is extremely weird. Uh, that was what was expected. Uh, but again, the centaur said that he gets, we can't rely on that and... Uh, if he does start fighting, there's little chance they could uh, be of any effectiveness against them. I mean, you've seen the Magma Dragon. Maybe a thousand centaurs would be enough to kill him. You don't even okay. have that for the defense of the forest now. <clears throat> or centaurs. The question is, how do we apply this water to the dragon. How do we get close enough? I think, I think the central said that you code your weapons in it. If I remember correctly, did you say something like that, or am I just making that up? Maybe. maybe. I mean, uh, I think that's something that. Yeah, no, he said that. He said that. No, I was like, I was like. Shh. Could Saskia forget this? Should I tell you? And yeah, you could. You still, you still have like the centaurs behind you, so you could get it confirmed quite easily. The centaurs that, that, that you have get in, uh, gone on as mounts. Because or I'm pretty sure it was like everyone gets like a vial for mm -hmm. themselves, and then I think that was the idea behind it. Yeah, you filled up a water skin with it, if you remember correctly. <sighs> a water skin is Decision. enough for four weapons. Okay, so... We would have to get very close, perhaps someone would have to draw the attention of the dragon or the army and we have to go and perform a sneak attack of some sort. But it would be quite hard since they have burned down a lot of the forest in between, so getting up there is going to be a hassle unless we have some kind of magical um, invisibility, or or if someone could, uh, as you hear, if someone co if someone coat their projectiles in it, perhaps. As you hear that, uh, Princess Tiger, you feel like a throbbing and uh, a uh, something coming from your backpack. You're not sure, like heat. <laughs> no. They're <laughs> coming back and say no. Bad or bad. You that feeling doesn't subside, and <sighs> it, it grows. It pulsates. 
do we know she has the orb though? Or like, did yes. you ever? Yes, yeah. everybody knows she has the orb. Not me. We, we, yeah. we, 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 oh, took it all th yeah. we stole it all together. That was. Yeah, the yeah, I suppose. Uh... Mm. I want to take out the orb and look at it. Princess Tyler has already made enough bad decisions for one day. Okay. Uh, do you say anything? Or you just ignore it? I, I literally, like, scold it. I don't know if anyone else says anything after I, they hear me scold the orb. Mm -hmm. Okay. talking to that thing <laughs> the Goblin King had? Throbbing. Throbbing. Uh, it's trying to get me to pay attention to it. Just to explain real fast, uh, the orb is a quite like a magic item that the party has acquired in like the beginning of the adventure. Someone they stole it from a goblin king that used it to create abominations by bonding creatures and bodies together into a whole functional creature, a monster of sorts, and they stole it. Now, if we were another party. That might not be so as many qualms. That might be something that we would use. <laughs> yeah. But we're we're pretty uncertain at this point at what ramifications that would have, and I don't think our party would be, uh, you know, keen mm -hmm. on creating Just monsters. From my out of character knowledge, all that it would serve is it would turn you into some old, like really, really overweight goblin, and that's the only thing that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so Tiger Princess Tiger says it throbs. Which I don't know how Jason <laughs> would take. Not knowing what this is all about. At the moment, I guess Jason's just kind of like, what's with everyone and like all this magic stuff? And he's just, <laughs> I guess, he's just trying, to, trying to keep it out of his head, like just kind of trying to ignore it. It's part of a much bigger thing, Jason. Don't do. Well, you you'll be we we'll we'll fill you in eventually, but it's a lot to take in, and I think you also need to figure out who you are, since you don't seem to be you, you don't seem to know too much of yourself. But we'll we'll, we'll we'll get to it. We'll get we'll get to it eventually. It's a bit crude saying I don't know very much. Not in that particular stance, but just as you don't know yourself, but you seem to keep low you, you, blows. You have see, yeah. You, it seems that you have kept a lot of your uh, other, uh, lot, lot of your what's it called, common knowledge, at least. Anyway. Um, uh, something does goes like very hot on your back, uh, Princess Tigeri, and then suddenly something falls on the ground, and your backpack is not as heavy. It burns a hole in the backpack. Yes, that's literally what just happened. Ah, uh, oh, flip! What the? I I, I, I go like uh, to inspect. Like I'm guessing we like we see or hear this. Yeah, I, I'll grab it and I'll look at it. Uh, you grab it and you see.